Well, this is awkward, isn't it? We were all expecting Comet Atlas to come and brighten up our night sky with an amazing comet, finally. And then it fell to pieces, uh, which is unfortunate. But rising like a phoenix from the ashes came Comet Swan, a comet that was discovered by an Australian who lives in Swan Hill. But that has nothing to do with why it's called Comet Swan. More on this later. I'm going to share my comet adventures with you. My name is Dylan O'Donnell. My name is Dr. Zen. And you're watching Star Stuff. So a few of you in the last video said that uh, not only did this lab coat make me smarter, but it also made me hotter. So much so that you couldn't concentrate. Because of that, I will be wearing the lab coat forever. Dr. Zen is joining me because we are in the middle of a pandemic and that means I can't get him out of the house. Yeah. <laughs> but that's okay, we're homeschooling at the O'Donnell household, which means we're playing a lot of rock and roll and blowing stuff up for science. <laughs> Now, we start this comet adventure by travelling out to Cape Byron, the easternmost point of Australia, where Dr. Zen and I set up a tripod and this very camera that I'm recording on, and we tried to capture Comet Swan in the twilight. Very windy, <laughs> very cold. It's uh, roughly 4am in the morning, uh, Zen and I are here. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I've woken him up so that we can go try and find Comet Swan. Comet Swan is over east. This comet is very large it's got a large tail i don't know if i'm going to see that tail it's really just on the edge of naked eye visibility right now but i do have my wide angle milky way lens as well so that i can take uh a sort of landscapey shots and see if it shows up at all in those shots now this is the beautiful thing about a comet this big and bright is that you don't actually need a tracker the comet's tail is so long and the nucleus was bright enough that i could just put my canon dslr camera with a long enough lens i was using 105 millimeters to take eight second exposures. Uh, that means that with basically very minimal equipment, I was able to capture a photo of this comet. And it worked out pretty good, but not great, I've got to say. When you're on a tripod, you are going to get star trails and zooming into the image of this star trails. Uh, but that's okay. The comet's so large and you shoot it so wide that you can sort of get away with it, at least on Instagram. So I decided to go out for a second night. Uh, this comet's up at 4.30 a.m. in the morning. So obviously I was sleeping on the couch while my wife slept comfortably in bed so that I wouldn't wake her. So at 4.30 in the morning, I went out and scurried around my neighbor's bins like a raccoon because that was the best way to get this shot. Now the shot I planned with Sky Guide on iOS, uh, which I mentioned a lot in these videos. And once I knew where it was gonna be, I knew where I could stand and I set up the Star Adventurer. Now the Star Adventurer worked great. Uh, it allowed me to do a very rough polar alignment, but I didn't take my time. So unfortunately, the second photo, even though it's better, still had trails. look cool from a tail perspective <laughs> concentrate you can really see that tail coming off the comet and it worked out pretty well using astrometry.net I could see that when I solved the image it was 10.8 degrees across and because the comet's going diagonally across that image I estimate that that tail is basically 11 degrees long now to give you some perspective 20 times the size of the full moon i think that is remarkable so this image worked out pretty well and i'm pretty happy with that but i really just want another night and try again and just get that polar alignment just a little better now i'm not taking the best shots here and there are people who have actual telescopes trained on the nucleus who are doing some remarkable images especially gerard who's already got an apod for this image i know you northern hemisphere guys are looking at our southern hemisphere pictures right now and i really hope that you guys get a good view of this comet now a little bit about michael michael mazziato discovered this comet he used nasa's swan satellite to pour through the images and pour through the data 
and figure out an unidentified object, in this case another comet, and he's discovered eight of them using this method. Now I've seen a photo of Michael and he has decent equipment. I can see a beautiful Celestron telescope there. I have to wonder, uh, Michael if you're watching this, after you got to like the third or fourth comet discovery, have you ever been tempted to just go out with your own telescope, image this comet, and then make the discovery through the Minor Planet Center? And that way you would get your name on the comet, uh, or even better, first legally change your name to McComet Face because then in the annals of history it would be called Comet McComet Face and that would be worth the price of admission. Advanced cometry photography is a little more complicated. You will have to uh, separately stack images of the comet nucleus and the star field uh, but at this wide of a frame and my intention was to get the tail length and I believe I succeeded in that, but it's not a great comet photo. And later on, if I get some more comet images and I really nut it out, then I will show you comet stacking properly. Hello, it's Dylan again, and Dr. Yeah. We have some breaking news. Um, sorry to report the light curve. As I've been editing this video, the light curve for Comet Swan has been dipping so much so that we think either it's just run out of juice or maybe it's disintegrated like Atlas, which is a real shame. Uh, I hope that's not the yeah. case for you Northern Hemisphere guys. Is that your professional opinion, Zach? Yeah, one kid called Atlas it goes to my school. <laughs> It's a yeah, Atlas has disintegrated, I'm sorry to say, Zach. And possibly Swan too, I'm sorry to report that. Anyway, back to the rest of the video. So, that's all I've got for you today. Super quick video, I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope Comet Swan comes over to your hemisphere soon and gets you out of bed at 4.30 in the morning. My name is Dylan O'Donnell, you've been watching Star Stuff, and remember, everything is meaningless, and we're all going to die. <laughs>